Hey, I'm Ryan. Welcome to Bible on the Beach. Now, today we'll be in Acts chapter 22, uh, verses 1 through 22. Now, my focus in Bible on the Beach is always to help uh, disciples make disciples and for churches to plant churches. Uh, this is a simple way to follow God and help other people learn about God. All you need is a Bible uh, and a few friends and some food and the Holy Spirit, and you can see God do beautiful things. Um, this simple approach has helped us grow to 22 churches in five countries and provide uh, 6,600 you're blessed. So today let's get right into Acts chapter 22. Now today we're going to look at how Paul was uh, an expert in his culture and the wise person uses their cultural expertise to share about Christ. This is what Paul did. Paul uses his expertise, his background as a platform to share about his faith in God. Now this is the wisdom that we need today. Every person watching this is an expert culturally in some area, and God wants to use your cultural expertise to share Christ with others. And I want to encourage you to do that today. This is what we're going to learn today from Acts chapter 22. We'll pick it up in verse 1. It says, Ladies and gentlemen, fellow believers and elders, please listen to me as I offer my defense. Now you'll keep you'll remember last time that Paul was brought in in front of uh, the religious leaders to give a defense as to why he kept teaching about Jesus. So now, now he has a chance to explain himself. Now, it says, Now when everyone realized he was speaking to them in their Judean Aramaic language, the crowd became all the more attentive. You see, people always listen when you speak the same language that they speak. Now, it could be English, uh, it could be Spanish, it could be Urdu, <clears throat> could be any of the physical languages. It could also be uh, surfing, playing baseball, uh, playing football, a certain type of music. When you speak people's language, they're much more uh, receptive to what it is that you have to say because there's a level of comfort there that exists uh, and a level of trust. And God always wants to use uh, an atmosphere of comfort and trust for people to open up their hearts to whatever it is that God wants to say to them. So Paul says, I'm a Jewish man who was born in Tarsus, a city of Turkey. However, I grew up in this city and was properly trained in the Mosaic Law and tutored by Rabbi Gamaliel according to our ancestral customs. So this is one of the reasons that Paul was chosen by God was because he had a diverse background. <clears throat> he had a sophisticated education. He had a, a cross-cultural background. Uh, he was he spoke multiple languages. So this is a this is why he had such a broad audience. He says, however, I grew up in the city and was properly trained in the Mosaic Law and tutored by Gamaliel according to customs. I've been extremely passionate in my desire to please God, just as all of you are today. And what he meant when he said this was that he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Now this was the highest class of Pharisees, the people that had been uh, developed and educated the most. Um, in the religious traditions and customs of, of that time. <clears throat> he, in fact, so much so, he said in verse 4, I've hunted down and killed followers of the way. So let me point out right here, if you ever think that someone is incapable of following God because of their past, <clears throat> look at Paul. Paul is admitting here that he had murdered followers of Jesus, and yet God still loved him and still used him and still wanted to work through his life. You know, no one is outside the ability for God to change their life and for God, God's grace to give them a new start. He says, I seized them and threw them into prison, both men and women. All of this can be verified by the high priest, the council of elders, for even, I even wrote letters to fellow Jews in Damascus authorizing me to arrest them uh, and bring them back to Jerusalem as prisoners to be punished. I was on the road approaching Damascus about noon. A brilliant heavenly light suddenly appeared, flashing all around me. As I fell to the ground, I heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Uh, and he said to me, I'm Jesus the victorious, the one you are persecuting. Those who were with me saw the brilliant light, but didn't hear the voice of the one who spoke to me. So I asked, Lord, what am I to do? And the Lord said to me, Get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told about all that you are destined to do. 
because of the dazzling glory of the light, I couldn't see I was left behind. I had to lead me by the hand the rest of the way into Damascus. So you see, God intervened at just the right time in Paul's life. Don't ever give up on people that you think can't walk with God or are too far from God. It's not what God does with us, and it's not how God wants us to relate to others. So, a Jewish man living there named Ananias came to see me. He was a godly man who lived according to the law of Moses and was highly esteemed by the Jewish community. He stood beside me and said, Saul, my brother, Saul, open your eyes and see again. At that very instant, my eyes I could see. Then he said to me, the God of our ancestors is destined you to know his plan and for you to see the Holy One and to hear his voice. For you will be his witness to every race of people and you will share with him everything that you have seen and heard. So now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash away all your sins uh, in his name. So you see, God had a plan, and it was for Paul to go into every space and every place and every race to represent Jesus and to establish new churches, and that's exactly what Paul did. You know, God has a plan for your life, something big, something much more uh, creative and imaginative than even you could expect for your life. I want to encourage you to stay open to it. You never know what God wants to do in your life or, or how he might want to work through you. He says, but Lord, I argued, they all know the, that I'm the one who went into our Jewish meetings to find those who believe in you and have them beaten in prison. When the blood of your witness Stephen was shed, I stood by in full approval of what was happening. I even guarded the cloaks of those who stoned him to death. Then he said to me, go at once, for I'm sending you to preach to the non-Jewish nations. So God, there was a lot of failure in Paul's past, uh, and Paul experienced Jesus. Just like God wants everyone to experience Jesus, to have their own encounter with God. And then God said, I've humbled you, now you're going to go and you're going to be my witness to a people that you don't know. And uh, the crowd listened attentively to Paul at this point, but when they heard this, all at once they erupted with loud shouts saying, get rid of this man, kill him. He doesn't deserve to live. Man, sometimes in life, we just face tremendous opposition, tremendous trials, tremendous difficulty. We have things happen that we don't understand. God gives us his grace. He calls us. The next thing you know, we're getting falsely accused. But I want you to relax, and I want you to trust that God often works through very difficult circumstances in our life. They're not to be avoided relax in the middle of difficulty later on you'll be able to look back and you'll be able to see how God was weaving his artwork in your life to accomplish his will his way that is his plan for you uh, and for me yeah thank you so much I love uh, teaching the Bible uh, here every day the Bible on the beach I come down I surf lowers and then I just read a portion of scripture and I get my thoughts about it if this is helping you would you do me a favor subscribe maybe tell somebody else I just do these little eight to ten minute takes on the Bible really fun uh, God, I feel God uses them many people text me and say hey keep doing these they're encouraging me so I hope they help you today um, and I just love you and bless you in Jesus name have a beautiful day